You're watching Zoo Tours, the channel that takes you on a virtual field trip to the zoo. On this episode of Zoo Tours, we're finally making the return to Florida's Jacksonville Zoo, a place that we're already a little familiar with. Last year we had a pretty wild time in the huge Africa Zoo. Now we're moving on to explore a kind of exhibit this channel isn't too familiar with. A South America attraction. Visitors had the pleasure of trekking the range of the Jaguar in 2004. A two and a half acre project that invites all to discover nearly 50 animals of Central and South America's forests, rivers, and not so abandoned temple ruins. Though several exhibits have been added since, many still think of this as the zoo's signature attraction. Before we start, once again I have to thank Johnny for providing some of the best clips this channel has ever seen. For now, I'm asking you to follow his Instagram accounts, but pretty soon I'll be asking to follow his own zoo channel. The portal to Jaguar territory takes you into a Spanish colonial themed plaza. Not only is it the best dining spot in the zoo, but it doubles as an event space. So you can eat, drink, and be merry next to the attraction's namesake. This is the larger of two enclosures for a certain big cat. While they didn't show, it was still kind of cool to see an underwater viewing stocked with a school of black pacus. Not seeing this cat was a pretty tough miss. But then we looked into the more lush temple enclosure and then spotted a Jacksonville Jaguar. So what is a cat doing with such a deep pool? I wish I had my own proof, but they're one of the few cats that dispel the belief that all cats hate getting wet. They're excellent swimmers, and they actually prefer to live around rivers and streams, so their prey isn't limited to those that only live on land. After some breeding success, Jacksonville had the largest jaguar population in America, with a total of eight. These days, I believe they're down to only a few, and they really do make for one excellent opener to any exhibit attraction, especially when they live in one that's on the more unique side. I want you to comment below what your favorite jaguar exhibit is. Yes, they were the headliners, but there are still a lot more exciting surprises along the way, especially in the Lost Temple. Some zoo fans aren't really big on zoo temples because they're not exactly natural looking, but I think Jacksonville did a great job with both the theme and details for the habitats. First up is one of my favorite amphibians, the Aquatic Cecilian, which is equal in beauty, obviously, to this emerald tree boa. Next is the largest venomous snake of the New World, the Bushmaster. Their genus name, Lachesis, refers to one of the three fates in Greek mythology who, in short, measured and determined the destiny of a mortal's life, a tribute to the lethal power of the Bushmaster's bite. The fangs of the yellow-bellied puffing snake have two kinds of venom, one for killing small mammals and another saved for birds and reptiles. A little on the smaller side, we have the Mexican alligator lizard next to the eyelash viper. I believe the Kaecilians used to share this with the caiman lizards. They have a broad orange head, green body, powerful limbs, and a muscular jaw. And they spend more time swimming than most lizards, in their case, swimming with freshwater stingrays. Continuing the semi-aquatic theme, the temple has a green anaconda. They were not as visible as I was hoping they'd be, but it was still impressive nonetheless to get this close to them. Down the hall are a couple more terrariums for a very curious Aruba Island rattlesnake, a critically endangered species endemic to a small island just above Venezuela. They're settled next to a smooth helmeted iguana, also known as the elegant headed basilisk. These two caves that are located right across from each other create the darkest part of the temple. Appropriately, one contains a colony of vampire bats and Siba's short-tailed bats in the other. And lastly, this large mixed species habitat features an aquatic box turtle and the Utila spiny-tailed iguana. That brings us to the River's Edge region. 
The first of its two exhibits is viewable from both the temple and outside. Either way, you're getting pretty close to squirrel monkeys. True to their name, they're extremely quick, curious, and mischievous, especially Jacksonville's. One of them was even able to slip through the mesh right after this exhibit opened. They share this with black howler monkeys. One of the largest monkeys also has a noticeably large neck. That is all thanks to their hyoid bone. We have it too, but the monkeys have one that's enlarged and more cup-shaped to make their voices heard from three miles away. We all know that monkeys can be pretty distracting, in a good way, but keep your eyes peeled for the giant anteater. The term anteater actually refers to four species from a suborder that essentially means worm tongue. And no, they don't have influence on Rohan royalty, but they are all known to eat ants and termites. Go figure. Giant anteaters have about a foot worth of face, yet have no teeth, but they do have a 10 millimeter wide mouth and a two foot long tongue, which they can flick in and out of its mouth nearly three times a second. It's coated in a sticky saliva, so if any insects get caught on it, there's no escaping from becoming anteater food. When we visited about a year ago, we only saw one. Don't get me wrong, it was an amazing sight on its own. This year, Johnny went back and saw something wonderful. In a standing position, a mom will usually give birth to a single pup that's born with a full coat and is already practically identical to the adult. Since they are solitary, the mom is literally left to do the heavy lifting, as her offspring will cling to her back for up to a whole year. One really cool thing about this exhibit is the designers put holes in one of the walls so they can sniff the animals next door. Their exhibit was going under maintenance last year. Fortunately, when my good friend went back, he documented what's called the world's friendliest animal. So how did the capybara get such a chill reputation? Well, this is likely because they are extremely social, both amongst themselves and other species. They probably know that getting along with others is a great way to provide each other with security and other benefits. One example, many birds will eat insects stirred up from a grazing capybara. The birds get a meal, and in turn, this giant rodent is protected from ticks and parasites. They seem to be so trusting to the point that some question their survival instincts. But you have to remember that a lot of the affection that you see mostly happens in controlled environments, where they don't really have a reason to be alarmed. Oddly enough, wild cappies don't seem to mind the presence of crocodilians, but they still won't try to make friends with eagles, anacondas, and of course, jaguars. We're now headed towards what might be the zoo's peak, the Emerald Forest Aviary. As said on the previous Jacksonville video, this place is well known in the zoo world for its few but memorable aviaries. For the sake of saving the best for later, we'll go a little out of order. The guest path is a single loop through a 7,700 square foot flight cage and goes around a well-detailed central pond. So you share the space with Mesoamerican and Central American river turtles, the American oyster catcher, black-bellied whistling ducks, an entertaining brown pelican. Don't worry, that's just your typical yawn. There's roseate spoonbills, a regular to both South Central America, and even Florida. Scarlet ibises that completely contrast the black-faced ibises. Inca terns, I've seen twice exhibited with Antarctic penguins, and the rest were in rainforest habitats, but they mostly naturally range the cliff sides of South America's west coast. If birds really aren't your thing, I'd recommend making an exception here, because the Emerald Forest Aviary is much more than just birds. Just outside of the flight cage, but still within view, is, or was, a red-footed tortoise. Now the true stars of the aviary, and all of the range of the jaguar in my opinion, the giant otters. How giant are we talking? Imagine swimming next to an otter, and that otter is either longer than you, or they just barely come up short. Some adults are only three and a half feet long, but others are nearly six feet long. 
that's nearly triple the size of the world's smallest otter, which Jacksonville also happens to have. And they seem just as cute as all the other otter species as well. But don't let their looks fool you. They're carnivorous, agile apex predators, and like other otters, they can be very territorial and have been known to do unspeakable things to anything that gets in their way. Bird might not be on their menu, but I really wouldn't want to see what they could do to the sun bittern. Even the mighty jaguar, who we just learned doesn't see water as an obstacle, will think twice before entering a river when these guys are nearby. There is a third habitat, I guess also technically outside of the aviary. This once contained a harpy eagle, as seen on episode 50. Now it's since taken over by cotton top tamarind, a very cute squirrel-sized monkey named for having all that flow on and around their head. But you'll notice they're one of just a couple of tamarinds that have bare or lightly covered faces. A feature that, you might say, is very reminiscent of a tiny Albert Einstein. Alright everybody, we just have one more species. Located between this range and the children's zoo is a large lagoon with American flamingos. Though famously found in the Caribbean islands, they still fit right at home in this section as they inhabit the Yucatan Peninsula in Mexico and South America's north coast. And that, ladies and gents, was the Jacksonville Zoo's famous Range of the Jaguar. There's plenty of examples out there of exhibits that show their age when they reach a couple of decades old. But this is still regarded as one of the better South American attractions in America. And you really don't have to question why it won the AZA Best Exhibit Award. So if you like what you saw, please consider subscribing. See if you all can answer this episode's trivia question. And please stay tuned for the next episode of Zoo Tours.